the main topic of my research is the stable homotopy groups of spheres. So first, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about what these stable homotopy groups are. So a fundamental problem in algebraic topology is to determine the unstable homotopy groups. Okay, so this is the, written pi n plus k of s k, okay? and it's the set of homotopy classes of maps from a sphere s n plus k into another sphere s n. Okay, this indexing is a little bit funny, uh, and it, we'll see later why this makes sense. Okay, so here are some first results about the unstable homotopy groups. First of all, pi n plus k of s n is zero if k is less than zero. In other words, if the dimension of the source is smaller than the dimension of the target, then the group is zero and nothing interesting is happening. Okay, the second part of the theorem says that if the dimensions are equal, you're mapping from s n into s n, then the group is z, the integers, okay, for any n greater than or equal to zero. That has to do with the degree of a map or the index of a map, and it can be detected in homology. Okay, the third part of the theorem is much more sophisticated, okay, and it says that these unstable homotopy groups are usually finite, with some exceptions. First of all, pi n, s n, we already saw that that was the integers, okay, and also pi 4m minus 1 of s 2m is also infinite, okay, and that's a famous result due to Serre. Okay, so going deeper, there's another structural result about these unstable homotopy groups called the Freudenthal suspension theorem. Okay, so first thing you should do is fix a k. All right, and let's consider this sequence. Here's pi n plus k of s n that we've already been talking about. Okay, if we suspend both the source and the target, we increase their dimensions by one, and we map to pi n plus one plus k of s n plus one. And similarly, this group in one dimension lower maps in. Okay, so you get this infinite sequence that extends forever to the right. Okay, and the theorem says that this sequence eventually stabilizes. That what happens eventually is that there's some fixed group that occurs again and again and again forever. Okay, so we're going to study that stable limit value, okay, in this stable homotopy group, pi k is the value of pi n plus k of s n for sufficiently large n. Okay? And the Freudenthal suspension theorem says precisely that this definition, pi n plus k of s n, does not depend on n as long as n is large. Okay, so these are the groups that we're going to study. They tell us a lot about the unstable homotopy groups, but they are far from telling us everything about the unstable homotopy groups. So even if you do get a lot of good stable information, you still have a lot of hard work to do in the unstable information. All right, let's take a short break here and look at some applications, okay? So uh, the one application that I'm gonna talk about has to do with differentiable manifolds, okay? So consider the space Sn, the sphere, dimension n. Turns out this sphere can be equipped with more than one smooth structure, okay? Depending on the value of n. This is not at all intuitive fact, but nevertheless true, okay? For, uh, for very low values of n, to three and four in particular, the, the situation is, is wildly complicated and far beyond what we're gonna talk about here, okay? But for large enough n, in particular for n greater than or equal, greater than or equal to five, Curvair and Milner showed how to enumerate these smooth structures, okay? And their, and their enumeration has several fairly sophisticated ingredients, okay? The first ingredient are the stable homotopy groups that we've been talking about. Okay, so if you want to enumerate smooth structures, you have to compute stable homotopy groups. Okay, you also have to use some values of the Riemann zeta function at negative odd integers. Okay, and the third thing you have to know about is the Kvara invariant. Okay, and this is one of the many reasons that the Kvara invariant has drawn so much attention in recent years and, and, and so much study. Okay, if you put together various recent results of various people in various combinations, Okay? And I've listed the names of, some, of, of the people who have been involved in various parts. These are not all co-authors with each other, but they're involved in various parts of this project. Behrens, Hill, Hopkins, myself, Mahowald, Ravenel, Wong, and Chu. Okay? Then you get this following uh, cat, uh, classification of, of, of spheres with smooth structures. Okay? For n between 5 and 140. So it's not completely general, but in this large range between 5 and 140. The only spheres that have unique smooth structures turn out to be 5, 6, 12, 56, and dimension 61, okay? We don't entirely know what goes on beyond 140, although we do know some results, 
Okay? We kind of guess, we're not exactly sure, but we kind of guess that maybe this is the whole list of spheres with unique smooth structure, and there aren't any more examples, although we don't really know that. All right, let's get back to the stable homotopy groups themselves. Okay? So the way that I have studied stable homotopy groups in recent years is through this idea of a deformation of stable homotopy theory, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Okay, so C-motivic stable homotopy theory was developed by Morel and Novotsky in the late 90s, okay? and it was intended to be used to study problems in algebraic geometry. Okay? But what we're using it here for is to study problems in algebraic topology. Okay? This homotopy theory is equipped with a parameter tau. Okay? I'm being a little bit vague about what I mean by a parameter here, okay? and that's because the details get, would, would take us into a too technical of a direction. Okay, so if you invert this parameter tau, then what happens is that you can re you recover classical stable homotopy theory. Okay, so C-motivic stable homotopy theory has inside of it contains all of classical stable homotopy theory by inverting tau. Okay, on the other hand, if you set this parameter tau equal to zero, then what you obtain is a category that has an entirely algebraic description. Okay, and that's a pretty surprising result. This is not something that was anticipated originally, but is nevertheless true. Okay, so these ideas about inverting tau and setting tau equal to zero can be repackaged in nice language in this theorem of Gheorghe, Wang, and Zhu, which is that C-motivic stable homotopy theory is a deformation of classical stable homotopy theory with algebraic special fiber. Okay, and that's just, a fa that's just fancy language for what we're saying up here about inverting tau to get classical and setting tau equal to zero to get this algebraic category. Okay, so the consequence of this theorem is that you can effectively transport information between these three contexts, between the algebraic category, the C-motivic category, and the classical category, okay, uh, because, because they're related nicely in this deformation, okay, and um, and as importantly, the algebraic context is amenable to machine computation. It's a purely algebraic category. It's entirely expressible in terms of homological algebra. And the computers can do the linear algebra to calculate in a, a very large range in this algebraic category. Okay? So what we can do is then use the computer data in the algebraic category and then transport it to the C-motivic and classical context to obtain new topological information, okay? And the result uh, of a large project of myself and Wang and Zhu is that we have extended the computation of the stable homotopy groups okay, from the previously known range of zero to 61 out to a much larger range from zero to 90, okay? And this is a, this is as, as these stable homotopy group computations go, this is a pretty big, big breakthrough. This is, this is a lot of new information. And, and it's all due to this, to this deformation perspective and especially this machine computations in the algebraic context. Okay, so this project, the success of this project uh, suggests some future problems for study. Okay, in particular, we should uh, be thinking about whether there are other deformations of stable homotopy theory that are also useful. Do those uh, other deformations tell us something new about stable homotopy groups? And also, do they have geometric interpretations? The C-motivic homotopy category has a geometric interpretation in terms of algebraic geometry, and maybe these other deformations have some geometric description in terms of some other type of geometry. Okay? The answer to this first question uh, is, is yes, they do tell us. Already we have some preliminary calculations that tell us they do tell us something new about stable homotopy groups. The second question, we really have no idea currently uh, uh, about the interpretations. And it, if you'd like to read a little bit more about this, you can uh, take a look at a survey article uh, called Stable Homotopy Groups of Spheres in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences.